Ankle pathology is very common, and in athletics, over 45% of all basketball injuries and up to 31% of all soccer injuries are going to involve the ankle itself. Ankle sprains are when you have damage to the ligament or capsule of either the lateral or medial joint. The mechanism of injury can be inversion or eversion. Inversion is usually going to include a combination of inversion, plantar flexion, and internal rotation, also called adduction, and tends to be in a higher incidence than eversion. This is because the fibula is a longer bone on the outer side and protects the foot from going into an eversion type motion. But additionally, you have a very strong deltoid ligament and that stability is going to prevent that eversion motion. An eversion ankle sprain is typically occurring with a combination of eversion, dorsiflexion, and external rotation or abduction. Both of these ankle sprains are typically going to occur when a person is moving from either open to closed kinetic chain or vice versa. When we look at the signs and symptoms of ankle sprains, they are typically graded grade 1, grade 2, or grade 3. Grade 1 sprains involve the anterior talofibular ligament. The person will have minimal to no edema and will be point tender at that ATF. Grade 2 is going to include or involve both the ATF and the calcaneofibular ligament. The localized edema is going to be at that involved capsule and the person will be point tender at both the ATF and CF. Grade 3 is going to be a complete tear of one or more ligaments, very oftentimes all three lateral ligaments. However, when we talk about the lateral ligaments, the posterior talofibular ligament provides little resistance to inversion sprains and tends to only get injured with a subluxation or a dislocation of the talocural joint. But with a grade 3, this is where the athlete will say that they heard a pop. Pitting edema will come into the area and the person will have immediate disability. With a grade 3 sprain, it's almost better if the person has broken their ankle than having that sprain because the amount of time for it to heal is so long with that grade 3. In all three ankle grade sprains, ecchymosis is usually going to occur 24 to 48 hours post-injury. Range of motion wise, you will see a decreased active range of motion and passive range of motion for both dorsi and plantar flexion as well as in and eversion. The first special test that can be used is a Taylor tilt. The Taylor tilt will be done for both inversion and eversion. When done in inversion, you are testing the calcaneofibular ligament. During eversion, you are testing the deltoid ligaments. You want to perform this test in both dorsiflexion and 20 degrees of plantar flexion because in dorsiflexion it removes the anterior talofibular ligament. Other special tests that can be performed include the anterior drawer test where you stabilize the tibia and pull anteriorly on the calcaneus. The posterior drawer test can also be performed in the opposite direction. Anterior drawer is more for the anterior talofibular ligament, posterior drawer for the posterior talofibular ligament. If you look at this table, you can see that the grades are going to be different based on the end feel of range of motion, with grade 3 being soft or non-existent as compared to grade 1 or grade 2. But with the special test, we're going to be looking not so much for pain, but more for laxity in that ankle itself. The gold standard for ankle sprains is doing an arthrography or an operation that goes in and looks at it. Obviously that's something that we're not going to do very often with ankle sprains. In a systematic review, 
it was found that doing a combination of the anterior drawer test looking for hematoma discoloration and that palpable pain anterior to the lateral malleolus is going to give you the best sensitivity in determining ankle sprains. However, the systematic review was not done by athletic trainers. It was performed by other medical professionals. Depending on the severity of the ankle sprain, we are unable to do manual muscle testing although it can be done more so for that first degree than going further past that. The functional test, we have a sine qua non, which basically means an essential action. Having the person perform a one-legged hop will help demonstrate the severity of that ankle sprain. Diagnosis is usually going to be clinical, although an x-ray can be performed to see if there are any fractures as well. Ankle sprains are going to be treated differently depending on the type of sprain. We can definitely use a felt horseshoe, which will help move that edema up the leg, keeping it out of the ankle and hopefully out of the foot. We can use braces, but taping can also be done to help with those ankle sprains. And you all know how to do taping for an ankle sprain, but something you may not be aware of is a open basket weave. And with an open basket weave, we actually create a place to kind of force that swelling. So again, it's not ending up in the foot because once you get the swelling into the foot, it causes issues there. We can add a horseshoe, usually to the lateral part of the ankle where the sprain is. This lateral horseshoe, again, helps get that edema up the leg. And we're gonna start taping an open basket reeve very similar to what we would do when just doing a regular ankle tape job. We're gonna have our medial to lateral strips followed by a horseshoe. Medial lateral horseshoe, and you can see how that's creating a weave within the tape job itself. Now this weave doesn't close all the way. You can see you still have an opening there in the middle of the leg. That opening is so that the tape really doesn't get too tight. If you were to complete a full ankle tape job and there was a lot of swelling, the patient would probably want that removed pretty quickly because it would get tight as the person was moving more. The open basket weave then is not a functional tape job, meaning you don't want someone out there practicing with this tape job. What you wanna use this for is simply to give some support to that athlete. You can include some heel locks if you want to give a little bit more support to that lower part of the foot, but otherwise you want to leave a spot for that swelling to take place. 